Yeah. Um, you know, it's a tough one for us. I thought we had a good plan. Uh, I thought Shaley did a great job um, pitching four innings. Kennedy came in and pitched well. You know, obviously got herself in some trouble with some hit batters that ended up, you know, a base hit scores. But, you know, it's time to get ready for regionals now. And so, you know, the, my message to them before that last inning, and I talked to them before the game, was um, we're not out of this until the last out. So obviously very happy with that last inning. I, I think we could have done a better job of having that type of energy and approach and focus earlier on in the game. But yeah. Now questions for our student athletes. Justin, you can go ahead. Asking for both players, I mean, obviously at the start you got long rain delay. What was that like for you guys, for your team? What did you do during that rain delay? Walk me through just that long time period, if you will. Um, we kind of waited to, we waited here for a while to kind of play it by ear to get kind of what was the next move. <laughs> then we ended up on the bus, but basically being able to keep our minds in the right place and not going everywhere else, knowing that we're going to have to come back and finish this game. I think we just have to revamp ourselves up. We were getting off the bus and stuff and we were getting going, having music going during BP and stuff, but you just have to have the motivation that we did at the beginning of the game. After you're all juiced up for a game, and then to you're in the eighth inning, it's a really close game, and then to have to take that long break away. When the rain did happen, I mean, it was kind of a momentum bust for them and stuff because they just caught that big hit. And I don't know, I guess rain does something for us, and we brought the energy that last inning, which, which is good. But at the same time, we should have been bringing it the whole game. Right. We've had a lot of practice on rain delays this year. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis, Too, you many. Have like a yeah. Yeah. Too many. Too many. Yeah. <laughs> had in that last inning was that something that like you know as the game was getting ready to start you in your lot in I guess your huddle in the dugout whatever you were very deliberate about making sure you had was it just something that comes natural to the group that you have I feel like stepping off the bus we knew we had to bring something to the field like we couldn't just walk on and expect to win the game so coming off the bus knowing that we had to bring it yeah especially after a long break like you know you have to bring it more than you did at the beginning of the game but again it just needs to be there from the get-go for this being just the beginning of postseason for y'all, what are you hoping you can kind of learn from this experience? I mean, putting us in the atmosphere and being one and done, right? I feel like that's kind of eye-opening for a lot of the newcomers. And I mean, everyone that's been through it, it's, it's fun to be a part of. But being able to know what it's all about is going to help us, I think, in these upcoming weeks. Yeah, like Shaylee said, it's kind of a shows the newcomers what it's like to be in postseason. And um, I think when our pitchers throw the way they did tonight, our hitters just have to step up because we're going to see a lot more pitchers like that. Any more questions for our student athletes? All right, you two may be dismissed. It had been such a pitcher's duel back and forth, yeah. and South Carolina had just gotten that momentum. And you crushed their momentum, but at the same time, it could have crushed anything you could have. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Tell me about that aspect of the momentum swing, both directions maybe, with that rain delay. Yeah, I mean, I think this game is a game of momentum. I think athletics as a whole is a game of momentum. And I don't – I felt like the game, really nobody had momentum. Like, nobody would take it this whole game. And then, you know, South Carolina came out and got got the, the hit um, that – shift it their way I, I I honestly feel like the rain delay worked in our favor um, and kind of put things it was kind of a reset button for us um, and, and like I said jokingly earlier we have had a lot of um, practice with some rain delays this year so you know I think for me it's it's just um, you know we didn't go back to the hotel we, I kind of keep them on the bus I keep them focused I keep them away from distractions and that's just kind of you know my philosophy so I thought they did a great job honestly if we came back and um, you know, got us out of that inning, made some big pitches when she needed to, and, you know, we, we gave her, you know, gave ourselves a chance. We just, I still feel like what you saw that last inning, we didn't bring earlier on in the game, and, and that's really the difference between a win and a loss. Ethan? Yeah, we didn't talk about both your pitchers and what you thought about. 
third ace. Yeah, I thought Shaylee, I actually just said to her walking up, I said, I, I'm pretty excited to watch um, film um, because I felt like her ball had some good movement on it tonight, and I thought she had good command. We made a couple of adjustments with her uh, this week in bullpens that I think really helped her from her load and her push off the mound. Um, so I said, hey, we're going to need that in postseason. I mean, we're really fortunate that we have five dynamic arms that we're going to be able to use um, throughout postseason. So I thought she did a great job. Um, I thought she used both sides of the plate. Her, her up ball was moving and her down ball. And, you know, South Carolina has seen all of us. Like, we've seen them and um, – they've seen us and so I think for me and I'm always going to talk pitching because that's where my heart is is you know I think it says a lot about both pitching staffs that we were able to kind of be in a pitcher's duel and we're on game four um, of, of you know this year so and then I lefty came in I thought she did a great job of complimenting Shea pounded the zone used her velo obviously got herself in some trouble with the hit batters um, but you know here, here's the thing um, she she got her she made those big pitches when she needed to I mean the, the ball that they hit was obviously you know but it was a CNI ground ball you know and they, they were able to execute um, when we weren't able to. Question I asked them, just what are you hoping from a coach's perspective your team takes from this type of environment? I mean, um, as much as I hate it, I'd rather us have that this feeling right now than have this feeling in a week or two, you know. And I said, listen, you gotta you gotta figure this out. Like it's win or go home time. Like there's there's no second chance. There's no game two. There's no game three. Um, and so I think for me, what I'm really excited. This is my first postseason tournament, uh, conference tournament. Um, the pack just started it, you know, this year. And so um, I think. Uh, ESPN, the SEC does a tremendous job of just the coverage, the setup of everything. I mean, it, it pretty much looks like the World Series here, and it's everybody's practice run. And so, I mean, there's very few conferences where I feel like you get this type of environment and, and feel uh, right before you go and play in, you know, postseason. We'll take a question from Zoom. Eric Lopez, you may unmute yourself. Coach, uh, thank you for talking to you. Two-part question. Number one, your vantage point from the dugout in the eighth inning, did you think that ball was gone? That was a valid drive there, that homer. And number two, you mentioned you wish you brought that energy intensity in that eighth inning you did earlier in the game. Did you sense any nerves from your group prior to the game? Do you think the length of the LSU Ole Miss game affected your, your group? Um, okay, so I'll start with your first question. You're talking about Ryland's ball in the ninth. I just want to make sure that we're referring. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, I, I felt she was a little early, um, and I was hoping the ball was going to carry. Last time we were here in Arkansas, they had a little wind. I was hoping I was blowing it. But, uh, I mean, I thought that was a good – I mean, we had some good balls. We hit hard um, just right at somebody. The left fielder made a tremendous play. Um, and, you know, it's, it's sometimes, you know, that's the way this game goes. Um, your, your second part about um, that energy, uh, you know, to be honest with you, we've just had some games where we're like this. I feel like if you watch, you know, cover us, you know, throughout the year, which I know you do, um, we've had some ups and downs. And I think it comes from our youth. It comes with um, transition and just, you know, continuing to raise our standard. Um, I don't think it had anything to do with the length of the, the LSU game. I just feel like we have to decide that we're going to come out and, um, you know, be ready to go. Coach, one big similarity and one big difference. Between Pac-10 or Pac-12 and, and Pac SEC. Yeah. Um, one big similarity, I think you just have tremendous athletes on the field um, that I think uh, are – it's fun to watch, you know, really good athletes play ball and compete at a very, very high level. I'll never lose sight of that and, and enjoy that. I mean, we get to – this is it. Really, when you think about – um, college softball, obviously we have a pro league and we have the Olympics, but I feel like, you know, college softball is really where you see a lot of elite athletes and they're practicing every single day, you know, towards one goal. So I think it's a very special place. Um, one big difference, you know, I think there's quite a few differences. I think, um, one of them would be um, just the coverage. I feel like the SEC does a really, really good job from a, a, a media standpoint for talking about our sport, exposing our sport. Um, just I feel like it's always on TV. And I feel like when you, when you, when you talk about growing the game, 
you have to be able to let eight-year-olds be able to watch the game. And I think they do a great job of putting a really good product every school. I mean, basically every school you can plug in and, pl you know, and, and they can do a full broadcast. And I think that's a huge difference between um, the two. I won't go into the others, but yes. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, you guys.